What's up? Today is all about shelter building. Shelter setups and things to think about when building a shelter. Like everything shelters. So today's episode, I'm gonna fuel you with five hot tips to think about when you're building a shelter. And we're also gonna talk about a little giveaway contest that has to do with shelters. It's gonna be awesome. You have to wait till the end for that. But first, five hot tips for shelter construction. Tip number one, build with a purpose. Like you gotta have a purpose when you're building a shelter. Now, when I say build with a purpose, I know somebody out there right now is thinking, well, yeah, we need to get out of the elements. That's why we build a shelter. And yes, that's true. But my point to this is why we wanna say build with a purpose is because there are tons of different shelter configurations, styles, sizes, shapes, components, tons. So you need to decide and really come up with a plan before you start your build. And here's what I mean by that. We're gonna use two different scenarios. Pennsylvania, right now, it's hot, it's humid. Um, at night, humid, there's lots of bugs. The bugs are flying around me right now. Spiders, gnats, um, ticks, everything, okay? So if we decide today that we are going to build ourselves a shelter, and the first thing you start to put together is an A-frame style, tight debris shelter that you're gonna crawl in that basically is made to maximize heat and keep you warm and dry, um, that's gonna be a nightmare sleeping. I mean, just think about that. Imagine crawling in this weather in a shelter that's gonna heat you up even more with bugs. Um, it is going to be the worst night of your entire life. Now, on the other hand, if you would decide to, in this weather, cut some trees and maybe make a nice raised bed out of logs, get some airflow underneath you, tuck yourself under some big pine trees, you're gonna have much better sleep. You're gonna stay cool. And even during a light rain, if you do get a little bit wet, you're not gonna get hypothermic. It only drops to the low 70s this time of the year. It's gonna be extremely comfortable and you will be good to go. Now you can flip flop that into the winter time here when it's super, super cold. You would never wanna be on a raised bed with the wind blowing underneath you and um, rain and precipitation hitting you and worry about being hypothermic. At that point, you'd wanna be in one of those debris shelters packed with leaves, real tight, keeping in your body heat, keeping you dry. So really, when you think about it, and I mean, this can go any location throughout the world. You need to think about what is the purpose and what is the time of the year. Build with a purpose, super important. All right, tip number two is all about foundation and framework. So when building a shelter outdoors, I want you to think about a couple things, and they are the big things around you. Logs, trees, rocks, heavy brush. All of those things can be used to your advantage time and time again. So we're gonna take this log that I'm sitting on, for example, and these really big pine trees that I'm under, and rock outcrops like that. All of these things when it comes to shelter building can increase the performance of your shelter. Let's first take the log and the rocks, for example. Utilizing them as a break for wind or to build your shelter off of is going to save you energy and also save you time. Using a down log in the back section or even the front section of your shelter for part of your framework is wonderful. They're normally very steady on the ground, they're solid, and they're not going anywhere anytime soon. So utilize that in your favor. Rock outcrops also, you can use the same thing or you can use them to protect your fire because sometimes you're gonna need radiant heat into your shelter. And things like trees and heavy brush work great for stopping rain and precipitation. They also great work great for wind blocks. So if you're looking to stop wind, you might wanna get in a heavy brush area. And if you're looking to gain more wind, you're gonna get away from that stuff. It all just comes down to thinking, what is mother nature giving me that I haven't seen yet? Number three, foundation and framework. So you decided where you're going to actually set up your shelter and what kind of shelter it is. Now you're gonna start building that shelter. And it's all gonna start with the foundation or the framework. It is extremely important that that is extremely strong and put together correctly. 
So your wood for your frame should be large enough to hold a lot of weight. Many times people make debris shelters or shelters that are going to have a lot of weight on them and they really skimp out on the lumber used to support that thing. I always like to tell people to think of it this way. If you're going to build a shelter and you're going to pile a lot of debris on it, how much does that debris weigh overall and are the sticks holding that up going to be supportive? The last thing you ever want to happen is be in a shelter and it collapse on you. So make sure the wood is good and solid, that it's not rotted and going to break anytime soon. Also, if you're using any types of knots and lashes that you understand the proper type of knot and lash to use for maximum support and stability. And then last but not least on this, one little hot tip that I can tell you from personal experience in building lots of shelters out here in the woods. Depending on your environment, if you have a lot of hot and humid summers and then cold winters, it's extremely important for a long-term shelter to remove the bark off of the trees that you're utilizing for your framework. Leaving the bark on is going to trap moisture cause more decay and rot it's going to allow bugs to get in there and it really quickly rots the wood away compared to wood that has been stripped clean of any bark number four optimize your resources listen shelter building can be very time consuming it can be hard and it can be very tiring so it's extremely important that you stack the odds in your favor whenever you start to construct your shelter Use wise and trees in order to hold up part of your shelter. Why build a tripod and have to cut more material when there's natural elements that can do the same thing for you quickly and easily? So I'm gonna use this smaller sapling as an example. Just imagine that this is a little bit bigger, okay? Um, so a lot of times what we'll do is we need framework or we need sticks to pile on top and we remove that lower portion of the tree and we take all these leaves and branches and we throw them and we walk away with this, leaving behind all this stuff, okay? Bad idea, right? All of this is something that we can readily use later on in the shelter build. So just because we got one component from a sapling or a tree, doesn't mean that that tree also didn't provide us with more. Stuff like this, even though it's green, is a great filler for debris shelters in an initial phase of filling. Now another thing, and I do this all the time, is we clean out the floor of our shelter area, okay? We like to, to get all that material out so we have a nice flat area to work with. But all that material that we're disposing possibly somewhere else can be used. It can be used for a debris bed inside the shelter. It can also be used on top of the shelter to help shed rain and precipitation. So if you're clearing out the base of your shelter, push it off to the sides. Optimize these resources. You can bring them in later. They're right there, ready to go. Don't do more work than you have to. And then the last tip or tip number five is heating and air conditioning. In most environments throughout the world, um, you're either going to need to warm yourself up or cool yourself down. Very rarely or in very small windows do we find that perfect temperature that the woodland is just great all day and all night. So it's very important that when you are constructing your shelter, you take this into consideration. Are you gonna need fire? Or are you going to need cool air? Now I know what you're thinking, cool air, Dan, Dan has lost his mind by number five, but honestly, bear with me here. Um, it's important when we're building our shelter because again, like if you think way back to number one, what we talked about, on hot days like tonight, if I was gonna sleep out, I would like a nice cool breeze blowing across me. That's gonna help cool my body down and keep me more comfortable. So I would build a shelter that's going to help with that, okay? Um, in the wintertime though, absolutely not. I don't want wind blowing across me. I want fire and I want heat radiating off me. So that's where we can utilize rocks or backstops to help radiate that heat back in and catch the heat. We can also set our shelters up in the correct direction so we don't get any wind blowing in when we don't want it. Another big popular thing too to do with shelters is to have a fire inside your shelter. So if that is going to be the case, you need to think about that while you're constructing it. We don't want extremely dry materials on the inside that can catch on fire. And we also need somewhere for the smoke to go. So it's important that we take these things into consideration depending on the time of year and what the shelter is going to be used for. And literally like that, five tips for shelter construction done. Now I know that was probably a lot more information than on my normal videos, but honestly, if you go back 
maybe make some notes in your bushcraft journal on this, review these things, and then when you get a chance to go out and actually make a good shelter at a camp, it's gonna be that much better for you, okay? Now onto the good stuff, right? All right, so contest giveaway time right now. So Gerber Gear reached out to me and said, hey, we wanna run a contest and we wanna do a giveaway. You interested in helping out with it? And being one of their badassiters, I said, yes, absolutely. I'm like your survival bushcraft guy. I definitely, I wanna get people building some awesome shelters. So that's what the contest is all about. It is going out and building a really awesome, rad, cool shelter and then sharing it with us. Now to do that, um, what we are going to need you to do though is you need to build a shelter, have a good time with it, whatever you wanna do, no rules with it. You build it, make it look awesome, right? Make yourself happy and have a fun time doing it. But then you're gonna have to head over to Instagram so we can actually see the shelters, okay? So you're gonna wanna follow me at Dan Wolak and then follow at Gerber Gear and then you're going to use hashtag, once you post that photo in your feed, you're gonna use hashtag easy doesn't provide shelter because we know that it's not easy out here, right? You gotta get after it. And uh, you know, if you know me, you know I like to put in the work and get it done. So hashtag easy doesn't provide shelter. Okay, I'll put all this down in the description below. Once the contest is over then, we will go and check out the coolest, raddest shelter builds and pick the winners, all right? And then we'll contact you. Now here's the cool part. So number one, you get to go out and play in the woods, right? You get to go out, spend some time, build some cool shelters. We get to check them out, which is gonna be awesome. I always love to see new stuff, but you get to win stuff. So Gerber Gear is doing two different things. Gerber Gear is giving away one of their double down folding machetes. Um, and if you have been following my channel, you saw we did a shelter build with this in the cold weather, which I wish it was cold again right now because it is hot and humid here in Pennsylvania. But um, I built an entire lean-to debris shelter with one of these. I also have been carrying one of these in my summer kit because it's great for clearing out brush, um, especially that heavy undergrowth um, during the summertime when it just gets out of control, especially now late summer. Take this thing and uh, use it machete style. So they're giving away one of their double downs and then they're also giving away one of their TerraCraft knives. So these knives um, I have used in a couple of my videos. I've also been giving these to students at courses. So if you've been here this past year um, at the Appalachian Bushman School, you probably have seen um, the TerraCraft and maybe you even got to use one. Good all around utility blade, um, nice size, comfortable in your hand, sharp 90 degree spine. So you're gonna get one of those. And then Cole Cracker is gonna be giving away one of our infamous belt pouches. Um, all handmade at the shop, antler toggle, um, belt loop on the back, good heavy duty leather. It's not gonna be this beat up. This thing's about 12 years old. It's mine, near and dear to my heart. Um, but this is what I'm gonna be giving away is one of these, and then also one of our hand forged steel strikers with some flint, so you can start fire my favorite way. So you're gonna be getting lots of good gear um, with this contest. So. But most of all, you get to go out in the woods and have fun. So again, um, on Instagram, after you post, hashtag easy doesn't provide shelter, enter, get a chance to win and build some cool stuff. Um, so thanks for joining me for this video, but uh, everything's down in the description. I don't wanna keep saying it over and over. Everything's down in the description and um, get out there, build it. I wanna check out your stuff, I'm excited. So uh, until next video, stay in the woods and enter the contest.